Hi, I'm Andrew Hales, and this is my top 10 essential documentaries. I wanted to use the word essential instead of favorite, my favorite documentaries, because I feel like everyone should see these documentaries, because they're that good. <laughs> I'm going to start out with some of the most popular ones. Number 10, Super Size Me. Uh, I saw this in the theaters when I was 13 or 14, and... It was, I think it was one of the first documentaries I've ever seen. It's like one of the few documentaries that's actually been a, like a commercial success. So I thought it was noteworthy to include, but, and you learn a lot about McDonald's and the fast food industry and uh, yeah, it's a good documentary, super size. And I actually met Morgan Spurlock in New York City. I got a picture with him. And I, I remember I was, I was such an asshole. I was like, hey, you're the super size me guy, <laughs> which he's probably so sick of, you know? Number nine, Man on Wire. This is a, if you type in like best documentaries of all time into Google, this is like usually in the top like three or two or one spot. There's a part in this where a guy like starts crying as he's describing his friend, like, um, you know, balancing on the wire. <laughs> and it's like the best part of the film. He's like, it's moving. Grizzly Man, number eight. Werner Herzog's masterpiece, in my opinion. It's just a, it's just really fascinating. This guy like lives with bears up in Alaska for like months at a time, and they they're like killer grizzly bears, and they have all this like old footage of him just chilling up there with the bears. It's it's awesome. Number seven, montage of heck. This is a Nirvana documentary about Kurt Cobain. It's it's really well made. There's a lot of original animation that I really liked. A lot of great interviews, and it's really eye opening. And you learn a lot about, you know, his upbringing, and you know, heroin addiction, etc. And it's like you know, it's jam packed with Nirvana music, so that's cool too. You know, Amy. Amy, I'm like obsessed with this movie. I saw this with Luke in 2015 in the theaters in Arclight here, and I almost cried at the end. I And I didn't really know anything about Amy Winehouse before that, and I immediately, it made me like a super fan of her. Like I didn't, and it, it got me more into like Tony Bennett and like jazz music in general too. But I, yeah, I saw it like two more times in the theaters. It was that good. Like I, I love the movie Amy, it, and it won an Oscar too. Going Clear, The Scientology, Scientology and the Prism of Belief. This is, I've seen this a few times. I love this. This is on HBO. They have like clips from their actual conferences and old footage of like Tom Cruise on a ship celebrating his birthday with like everyone from Scientology. <laughs> and they interview all these ex-Scientologists who talk about how they got into it. And, and it's just really fascinating. The Union, the business behind getting high. This is the documentary on marijuana. It's the best one I've ever seen on it, why it's illegal, and then all the studies done on it, and um, and of course the business of it. They interview like interesting people, Harvard professors, etc., and they all share their opinion on it. Black Fish, this is really fascinating. They interview ex-people that worked at SeaWorld and talk about like the inhumane practices they have and how they how it's like fucked up and the sea world is evil and stuff <laughs> and and they talk about uh tilicum which is this orca whale that like killed a few people i think and they and the but sea world like kept it under wraps and stuff gyro dreams of sushi this is one of the most beautiful like cinematography films i've ever seen it's about this sushi chef that charges like 300 dollars a plate in japan and they have like reservations like three months in advance and it's like the best sushi in the world. He's won like the chef Oscar award or whatever twice, which like no one else has done. And it's very inspiring too. He's like this wise old guy and he talks about how you have to dedicate your life to your craft. And, and I just, I love it. I love this film. All right. Number one, this, okay. Ready? N number one. Are you ready? The jinx. Whoops. The Jinx. Okay. Number one is The Jinx. I am obsessed with this this series. It's a six-part series. It's six hours long, I guess, in total on HBO. The Jinx is about Robert Durst, who is this guy that grew up in a rich family in New York, like a real estate company. Born into 
tremendous wealth. He's suspected of killing like three people. He's been on trial like multiple times, and they interview him and stuff. And the very the, like the very last like minute of the entire series, like your jaw will drop. They like they catch this like crazy raw moment at the very end, and it's like it's just like I've never been so. Like, someone could have spilt coffee on me in that moment, and I wouldn't have noticed. Like, it was the most, like, just the craziest, like, m moment in documentary history, <laughs> possibly, you know? Like, it's nuts. It's like a much more cleaner, cooler version of Making a Murderer. Making a Murderer was cool, I liked it, but Jinx is way better. But it's a lot like that, yeah. It's like, it's actually like the opposite of making a murder. Instead of like a hillbilly guy that's always getting convicted, he's this rich guy that's not getting convi convicted. So, hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Please share your favorite documentaries. I know, I know a lot of these are like popular, but they're popular for a reason. And it's because they're good. <laughs> and please like this video if you enjoyed it. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow.